A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Joy, the peace of God. What is the difference between happiness and joy? Thomas tells us that joy is an effect of love. Joy, which is about God, is caused by charity. It is not simply a happiness. I can find happiness in cookies, Obviously, in the smell of new books or a new album by Avenged Sevenfold. But joy I find in God alone and very often in His presence and work in others. Where do you find joy? Where do I? I find joy in praying with you living with you, watching you grow in grace and virtue. I find joy in God's presence in you when I recognize His gifts, His love given through you to others. This is different from being happy. Thomas tells us that the joy of charity is compatible with an admixture of sorrow insofar as one grieves for that which hinders the participation of the divine good either in us or in our neighbor whom we love as ourselves. I'm sure we've all had to say, at least to ourselves, could have done that better. I'm pretty sure I wasn't an instrument of charity when I said that. Or I wasn't the best version of myself. I find joy in this time of year. Imagining the Blessed Mother tenderly lifting up her child, blowing raspberries on his tummy tum, and the child laughing and kicking as Joseph looks on and chuckles to himself. I rejoice in the gifts, abilities, charisms, and personalities in this house. I rejoice in the ways that God works through you, the way you let Him into your lives to make Himself a home, and how He allows us to make our home in Him. Some are quiet, prayerful, intelligent, attentive to details. Others are getting used to so many new things in the United States, but have a wonderful gift for languages and always a smile. Others have a great love for the order, love for those who don't love us, a magnanimous spirit, and can always tell us which city has become an abode for demons and a cage for every filthy bird. Some of us have the ability to make people laugh. Baking, concern for the materially poor, and highlighting the good in others even when they can't see it in themselves. Others are caring, loving others no matter what. They share their musical gifts and talents happily with everyone. They have an ease in making friends 
with making everyone feel wanted and loved, accepted, and as part of a team, even if only a team of two. Some are able to think outside the box, trying to see things from another's point of view, have skills in debate, dedication to prayer, and fight that good fight, and running so as to win in that daily struggle against the snooze button. Others have gifts of pastoring, patience, graciousness, and quietude, which fuels the spirit of evangelization. Knowledge of self, perseverance, endurance, long-suffering, willing and wanting to be better than yesterday. Others have devotion and prayerfulness, gifts of good humor, explosions of real joy which can only be expressed with a song from the heart and the top of the lungs, often from Johnny Cash, Foreigner, Louis Armstrong, or Journey. These are just a few of the things I take joy in when I see the work of the Spirit in you. I can't name all the gifts and talents that everyone has at this moment. We just don't have the time. But know that each and every one of you has the Spirit working in you and through you in so many great ways. And each of you is truly a gift to all. But how do we become better? What are the ways we can become better brothers? How can we re use the remaining time of Advent not only to take joy in the work of the Spirit in others, but to be an instrument of that joy of the Spirit to others? Maybe that person I disagree with shouldn't be written off so quickly. Maybe reminding myself that although we don't agree on everything, we're all here to become better men, to grow in Christ more and more, and in a way which is as particular and individual as each brother is a particular individual. Maybe we must each look in the mirror and acknowledge that my needs my politics, my history, my favorite thinkers and theologians, my ways of expression, my pet theories, the lens through which I see the world or the church or mission or ministry may be different from another's. And that's okay. Imagine how much joy we can receive in simply getting to know another instead of remaining happy in our own perception of them. I want to end with this. You are a joy in my life. I hope I am a cause for joy in yours. I pray that this week as we approach Christmas, we can prayerfully rejoice in one another and let go of judgments and grudges, let go of any negativity we might be holding on to. I ask that God, in a spirit of humility, we all, myself included, pull up any weeds we have let grow wild and cut away any creeping vines which cover the garden of our souls so as to let streams of living water flow all the more easily through us. Ask Our Lady, the cause of our joy, to help prepare us for the coming of her Son by making us like her, a fitting dwelling for the love of that joyful, smiling, and laughing child. Ask the Holy, Spirit, Holy Trinity to make His home in us, 
to make us in all of our doings charitable, forgiving, accepting, humble, that we may prove to be his willing servants and the dispensers of his mercy and truth, which we have all received and in which we are all still very much in need. Brothers and sisters, a most blessed remainder of Advent to you. Onward to a grace-filled Christmas and to the rest of our lives full of Christmas joy and hope, not just happiness and nice thoughts, in a spirit of Advent expectation and waiting for that peace of God, the Prince of Peace. Brothers and sisters, God bless us, everyone.